Thank you. Thank you. How y'all doing today? Good. <clears throat> good. Good. How much time do we got? About 25 minutes? Somewhere in there? So, okay, so I won't go too, too much into my story right now. Like, you guys will get that at the, at the school assembly. You'll hear, hear my, my story and, and why I do what I do now and why I've been doing it for the last five years. Um, so what I'll do is I'll share a little bit of what I feel um, this young generation, where we're headed with this young generation. I'll share a little bit where I see things are going in the next 10 to 15 years. Um, the last five years I have, I've been all over the world. And so I just want to preface this by saying, like, I don't pretend to know more about your school and your community than, than you do. Like, I'm not going to come in here and say that I know everything and I, I'm not here, obviously, so each situation is different because, again, you guys are in this community. I leave, and so the work will continue with you guys. So I just want to preface that and by saying I don't pretend to know more about your community than you do. So what I really want to start off by, by saying is I want to read something that I saw online, and it kind of really sums up what this young generation is feeling, what they're doing, what they're going through, every single thing. And then I'll get into kind of what I want to talk about today, but... There's a, I did kind of cut some things out of this because I feel like some things didn't pertain, but I saw this floating around. You may have uh, seen it before, but it says, this is from a, a high school or middle school student. It said, I hate school, and no, it's not because I'm a teenager and I don't like waking up at 6 a.m. every morning. It's because the school system isn't about learning anymore. It's about passing. Pretty much every teenager is so stressed out about school that they suffer with mental health issues, fake illnesses, and even try to kill themselves. But yet nobody has thought to themselves, hey, maybe our system is flawed. And instead, given teenagers the reputation of that kids that are lazy and selfish, like what's up with that? I mean, who really cares about finding the area of a stupid triangle? Teach them how to raise a family, drive a car, get a job, pay bills, and live a happy life. I'm forced to sit in a classroom for six hours straight and learn about things that I'm not interested in and will probably never use in my life after my exams. And what really annoys me is that teachers don't understand that some students suffer from mental health disorders like social anxiety and force them to talk in class for a high grade. Or that some students suffer with depression and teachers just assume they are moody and negative all the time. Students are in tears every single night and wake up every single morning wanting to throw up at the thought of going to school, thinking that they'd rather be dead than go to school. How is that fair? The fact that I have to choose between my grades and my health is really messed up. And I believe that I saw this a few years ago. I believe that when I set out to, to do what I do, and, and, it's a, and it happened by complete accident, I'll be honest with you, my story, I didn't mean to start speaking. It just happened, and all of a sudden I was in the middle of it, and I said, whoa, maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But I realized I saw this a couple years ago with the young generation, and I, I see what they're doing, and I see that, you know, I look at the choices that they're making, and I'm like, man, they don't really understand the recklessness that they are walking into, right? I don't think that they really know. I think we're just sitting there talking at them saying, you can't do this, you can't do that, when they really don't understand what they're doing. And so I want to say this. I want to say congratulations. We have now entered an era, and hear my heart behind this, where your tests and homework no longer matter. They don't. And here's why I say that. I was asked a question a teacher in Iowa last April, he said, hey, can you tell these kids the importance of school? I said, they don't feel it's important. That teacher was a little offended at me, and I said, let me ask, let me, let me put it this way, and let me ask you this question. I said, on a daily basis of all the stuff that you go through and all the issues that you face with kids, overall, how much of those issues are academic-related? And just like your face just did, a teacher did that. A woman teacher in the assembly, she says, whoa, we don't. I said, exactly. And you can't tell them they need school because they see kids their age making millions of dollars on the Internet. So where does that leave us? Where does that leave us in a generation that doesn't care about school and schools have to get test scores, right? We have to hit the test scores every year. Otherwise, we lose funding and different things like that. Where does that leave us? I believe it leaves us to speaking their language. 
I believe it leaves us in a position where we have to step into their world, not expecting them to come into ours first. We have to understand what's going on at home, which I think from what I'm talking to your principal, a lot of you do understand that. So I commend you for that. That's amazing. I've been hearing things. And again, it's like we were talking earlier, right? When, when you find out your uncle OD'd and I'll say, okay, now go do your geometry. They're dealing with so much. We can not expect them to be in a situation and be in a place that they're not in. So where does that leave us? I believe where that leaves us is to finding what their strengths are, building relationships with them and understanding that they want to be heard. They want you to be real. They want to be able to trust you. And they want you to be able to love and care about them. If you cannot do those things, ladies and gentlemen, you will lose them quick. Coaches know a lot about this because you have to build relationships. I think you're a coach. You seem like you're a coach. I'm sure some other, um, other ones in this are coaches. A lot of coaches know this, right? A lot of coaches know that they have to build relationships. You probably know your situation with a lot of your kids, what home life's like, who they're living with, who's, you know, and so building relationships with them, understanding. When I was a sophomore in high school, I'll never forget this, because I'll be honest, I barely graduated high school, but there was a few teachers, there was a few teachers that invested in me. There wasn't many, and you'll hear my story today. Reason why I ended up in a 10-year alcohol addiction ready to kill myself, attempted suicide, and I'll share that story today, but I ended because I had an older brother and everyone always compared me to him. And I felt like nobody saw me. I felt like nobody heard me. I didn't feel like I was known. And so, but there was a few teachers. One was named is Todd Tester. He's no longer here. And actually the other one I'm about to mention, Dave Hofer, is no longer here either. They both passed away too young. Matter of fact, my first year, I played college football at Michigan State. I'll, again, I'll share that today. My first year at MSU, I got a call. Todd Tesh had been killed in a, in a car accident. And it's crazy because he actually helped make my decision, and that almost lost it. And I believe that's when my downward spiral happened, and it started. And then Dave Hofer, my sophomore year, I'll never forget this. I'm in the Commons. I could, I, I could never, ever get study hall in the Commons because I didn't have good enough grades. And in the Commons, we had concessions and all this, but I had to go in there because he was the teacher that was supervising. And I was sitting at the table and I was taking a test. And for me, I was just like, man, I couldn't concentrate anyway, so I kind of just blew through the test, right? And I got to the end of the test and he's like, all right, I'm sorry, I'm done. Mr. Hofer, he's like, all right, let me take a look at it. And he starts flipping through. And he goes, Bobby, no, no. He goes, erase your answers. I said, all right. So I started racing. And he scoots up next to me. And I'm sitting, he's sitting like right here, and I'm sitting right here. And he scoots and he goes, We're gonna go through this test together. I'm gonna read it with you. I'm not gonna give you any answers, but I believe that if you read something and you take your time on it, I believe you will do better. I didn't even know that about myself. And we read through the test. And I looked at the questions and the answers, and I was able to think critically about it. And I got to be on the test, and he didn't give me any answers. And from that moment forward, that was the first time that I felt like he really understood me. He knew me, and that was the only, one of the only teachers that took the time, that didn't tell me I was in my brother's shadow, that didn't always ask me why I couldn't be more like my brother. They said, you're a Bobby. I see that you're Bobby. I understand your strengths, your weaknesses. If you go through a test like that, you're not going to get it. And he sat with me from that moment forward. I believe I got an A in his class. And not to mention, we built a bond that I didn't have with any other teacher. So I want to sit here and tell you, I want to say, if you're here just for a paycheck, and I'm not saying it's an amazing one, don't get me twisted there, but if you're here just to make a living, I got to tell you, it's time to go. It's time to go. These kids don't need that. They don't need someone else to come in their life, be wishy-washy, and here for their own benefit. They need you to be here for them. They've had enough people in their life do that to them, as you know, right? I don't have to tell you some of this stuff. 
And so if it's, and I, and I hate to say it that harsh, and I don't think it was harsh, but I'm saying if you're just here because you want to collect a check, I don't know where to go, I don't have anything to do, I would suggest you start looking for something else because I believe where we're headed in the next 10 to 15 years is something that's going to be unprecedented. A lot of people don't like when I say this, I don't care, but I'm going to say it. I don't believe that we are going to be schools that are focused on what we are right now in the next 10 to 15 years. I believe we're going to turn into life skills school. I believe it's going to be social media influencing classes, life skills, all the things you need to be successful out there. And I believe I see that coming. I believe that's what makes me a little different from other speakers because I see what they're headed, where they're doing, the things that matter to them, the things that don't matter to them. I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok, I'm on everything that they're on. I see the DMs that come in. I talk to these kids about what they're dealing with. And one of the main things that they say to me is, man, teachers don't get it. They don't get it. They don't listen to us. They don't feel like they're being heard. They're trying to scream at the top of their lungs saying, please listen to me. And they don't feel like we're listening to them. And so I want them to know from my standpoint that I am your advocate. I am listening, so speak. And I will do all I can do to try to help you. I'm their advocate first, and then I'm an extension of what you guys do. And so I really believe that where we're headed is a different place, and I believe we're in a different time. And I believe that if we can understand and take one more moment, I get it, Netflix pension is dope. I've been there. You know what I'm saying? But what about staying after a few minutes with a student that just needs some extra love? What about staying after for a little bit and helping someone with some homework, pouring into them, investing into them, lifting them up, building them up? Because they're probably going home to a bunch of verbal and physical and sexual abuse. Let's just be honest there. And if it's not sexual, it's physical, verbal, emotional, all this stuff, that's what they're probably going home to. So what about their favorite teacher when they walk in the room and they see you walk in and it's so crazy because they see that smile on your face and they got up that morning for you. No other reason. No other reason. But getting up for you guys because their favorite teacher is coming to school and that's the person that believes in me. That's the person that wants the best for me. That's the people that, that man, I'll be honest with you, they said something to me many times and they build me up and that's the only thing I have to hold on to when I go home because my family, my parents, my dad's gonna tell me I'm a loser, my dad's gonna tell me I'm ugly, I'm fat, all this stuff, but that teacher right there, Mr. or Mrs. whoever, is the reason why I get up every day, reason why I haven't ended my life. As you know, suicide, is running rampant in this young generation. Like, it's by the numbers. Every day they're ending their lives. So many kids hit me up, I'm, I'm, ready, I'm ready to be done. 13 years old? And living something to be afraid of? It's so disheartening. And so I'm asking you today, and then I want to open up the floor for a little more dialogue. We're getting kind of to the end here. I want to open the floor for a little dialogue. I want to hear your feedback as well. I value everything you guys do. I appreciate everything you guys do. I can't do what I do without what you guys do and what you do. And I really hope that um, I didn't step on anybody's toes today. I really hope that I could just maybe give you some things you didn't know and some things you did maybe, you've maybe heard before. Um, but uh, I want to open up the floor for a little dialogue. And I had a point that I was going to make, and I forgot what it was. Oh, I'm going to challenge you guys to go the extra mile. Just go the little extra mile. Stay after a little bit with a, with a student. Obviously, some students are inappropriate and you need boundaries. I get it. So obviously, if it's a, if it's a healthy thing, but stay after with them for a little bit. You know, hey, pull them aside. Hey, I, I would like to, you know, I, I notice you the homework was a little maybe rough for you. Can, can you come in for a little bit after school or can I meet during, during one of my planning periods to kind of just go over it with you, just, just make sure you're getting it and everything? I mean, I think that would be and mean the world to them. And so I want to challenge you to go a little bit further and go the extra mile to really help save a kid's life because I promise you some of those kids will go on 
and they will say, man, it was that teacher right there that gave me the strength to keep going. I'll never forget Dave Hofer. I'll never forget Todd Tesher. I'll never forget those two guys. And I'm emotional because I'm passionate about this thing. But I hated high school because I was compared to my older brother, and you'll hear that today. No one gave me a fighting chance, which is why I believe I leaned on the alcohol so hard, and I tried to fit in so bad. But those guys left a lasting impression on my life, and I believe that you will too. You can open up the floor if you guys have any questions, any dialogue, any feedback you want to give. Um, I'd be happy to hear it.